Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your bro. Hope you're doing well. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys how we can build a basic quiz game in Python. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. If you wouldn't mind, please like, comment, and subscribe. One like equals one prayer for the YouTube algorithm. To begin this project, I think it would be wise for us to create a skeletal structure for how this program is going to operate, and then we'll fill in the gaps later as we go along. So to begin, let's define all of the functions that we'll need. We'll need four. We'll create a function that is named new game. Whenever we call this function, it will create a new quiz game for us. And for the time being, let's write pass just as a placeholder. We'll have a total of four functions. New game, a function to check our answer, a function to display our score, And lastly, a function to play again. All right. Now I'm just going to add some comments here just to separate each of these functions that we have, just so that it's a little bit easier to read. Although this part is not really necessary. So I just want to separate each of these functions for some readability. Okay, those are all the functions that we'll need. What we'll need now is some sort of collection to hold all of the questions and answers that we have, and I think a dictionary would be perfect for this. So what I did is that I created a dictionary named questions. A dictionary has key value pairs. Each key is a question that I would like to ask, and each question has an associated value. We'll have the user guess between answers of A, B, C, or D. So these would be all of the correct answers, all of the values within this dictionary. So here are some of the questions that I want to ask. Feel free to come up with your own questions. If you would like, you can copy the questions that I have. They should be posted in the comment section down below. So the questions that I'm going to ask are, who created Python? What year was Python created? Python is attributed to which comedy group? And lastly, is the earth round? I couldn't think of a fourth question, so I just threw in a random stupid question. And the correct answers to all of these questions in order would be A, B, C, and A but feel free to come up with your own. Well, we have our questions, but we'll need some sort of collection to hold all of the different possible answers to each of these questions. And I think a 2D list would work perfect for this. So I have a list of lists. A list of tuples could work too, I suppose. So here are all of the answers for the first question. And the correct answer is A. I believe his name is Guido Van Rossum. Hey, if you're listening, man, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. I'm really trying here. The second list corresponds to the second question. What year was Python created? It was created in 1991, at least according to Wikipedia. Python is attributed to which comedy group? The answer is C, Monty Python, like Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Good movie, by the way. And lastly, is the Earth round? This is a highly debated topic, but the answer is A, the Earth is in fact round. So I have a list of lists. Each list corresponds to a key value pair within my dictionary of questions. And this is a lot to type. If you want, you can just copy the code that I posted in the comments down below. Just copy and paste it and you'll have all of this. Or if you want, you can pause the video and type it. I don't care. So now that you have your questions and your options, we're ready to begin. So the first thing that we'll do within our program is to call the new game function to begin a new game. So after we have our questions and options created, let's create a new game by calling the new game function. Now, when we run this program, we'll generate our dictionary of questions and our 2D list of different options for each question. And then we will call the new game function to begin a new game. So let's head to the new game function and fill in everything within our new game function. So at the top, let's declare a few things. Let's say we have a list named guesses and guesses will be an empty list for now i will declare a variable called correct guesses set it equal to zero because we haven't guessed anything yet and we will set a current question number and set this equal to one to represent the first question okay now we need to display all of the questions within our dictionary of questions and we can use a for loop for that so for key in questions, I'm going to print my key. And let's just test this. Okay, yeah, here's all my questions. 
I think what I'll do is actually print something to separate each question. Let's say one of these lines. I think it would look better with them. Okay, I'll print this line and then we'll move on to a question. All right, now after rerunning this, we have each question and I added just a line break between each of these to make it look kind of fancy. Now I need to display all of the different options for each question and we can do that with a nested for loop. So if I were to write for i in options, print i, let me show you what happens. Now with the way this for loop is written now, it's going to display all of the different options available to us for the entire quiz game. What I would like instead is to display only the first list for the first question and then the second list for the second question and follow that pattern. So we're going to change our for loop around for i in options and we'll set an index for options. The index is going to be our question number minus one. Now remember what I said in previous videos where different collections including lists, tuples, etc. The first element in a collection has an index of zero because computers always start with zero. Then the next element would therefore have an index of one, then two, three, then you follow that pattern. We're using this question number variable as some sort of counter and since we initially set this to one, I'm just going to subtract one so that we effectively receive zero as the index. And now we just need to increment our question number after each iteration. So let's do that. I will add that to the end here after we finish displaying all of the options. Let's increment question number by one by typing question num plus equals one. And if I were to run this currently, we'll display all of the different options for each question. Who created Python? Here's all of the associated options. What year was Python created? Python is attributed to which comedy group, and lastly, is the earth round. Now it's time for some user input, so I'm going to create a variable called guess. And to make sure you don't put it within your inner for loop, it should be within the outer for loop. Guess equals input, and I'll create a prompt. Enter A, B, C, or D. Here's something to consider. We would like the user to type in either capital A, B, C, or D. With strings, they're case sensitive. What if the user typed in one of these letters but lowercase? If they're correct, we would still like to give them their point. Why don't we take our guess and make it uppercase? So guess equals guess, and we can make this uppercase using the upper method of strings. At the end of this game, I'm going to compare our guesses to the correct answers. So we have an empty list named guesses, and I'm going to append our current guess that we're working on to our list of guesses. So guesses dot append, and we will append our guess this round. Now that we have our guess and we've appended our guess to our list of guesses, let's check to see if it's the correct answer or not. So we're just about to fill in this check answer function next. So we are going to call this function and pass in a few items as arguments. So let's use the check answer function and we'll pass in the key for the current question that we're on. So the key is the correct answer. So that would be our questions dot get key. This would be the answer and we'll also pass in our guess and we are going to fill in the check answer function, but we need to set up the parameters. We're receiving effectively our answer as well as our guess. So I'm going to name these as answer and guess. And we are going to check to see if our answer is equal to our guess. If answer is equal to guess, let's print something, print correct. And I think we should give the user a point. We'll have our check answer function return one for one point. Return one. Else, if this is not the correct answer, let's print wrong and we will return zero. They do not get a point. 
And since this is returning a value, we should assign that. So let's assign the point we may or may not receive to our variable of correct guesses, which is initially set to zero. So we'll type correct guesses plus equals check answer and check answer will return one if we scored a point or zero if we did not score a point. And make sure you have plus equals because if you just set this to equals, then we cannot score more than one point. It will either be zero or one. So we are effectively incrementing our correct guesses by one for each point that we score. And now we're going to work on the display score function and we'll call that at the end after we finish all of our questions that we have. So make sure that you do not write this within the for loop. It should be outside of it because once we finish iterating through all of our questions, we're going to display a final score. So let's call the display score function and we'll need to pass in some arguments. Our correct guesses as well as our list of guesses. Okay, let's head to the display score function. So we have as parameters, correct guesses, as well as guesses. I need to remove this pass. I'm going to add one of these fancy lines in just to separate the questions from the results. And I will print results and maybe another one of these lines. Okay, so I need to print all of the answers. Answers. And I do not want to end on a new line, so I'm going to set end equal to nothing. And I need to display all of the values within our dictionary, all of the answers. I will do that using a for loop. For I in questions print questions dot get i and i do not want to end on a new line so i'm going to set end equal to nothing effectively and then i'll print a new line okay let's work on the guesses i think i'm just going to copy all of this and make some changes i'll replace answers with guesses for i in guesses print i. Okay, let's just be sure that everything's working. We're not calculating a score quite yet. So I'm just going to answer a, then b, c, and d. On second thought, after printing each of these answers and guesses, I'm going to add a space after each of these. So within each of these four loops at the end, I will add a space. Let me try that again. A, B, C, D. Okay, not too bad. Now let's calculate the final score. And we're still within our display score function. Let's set score equal to correct guesses divided by the length of our questions. And let me add a set of parentheses around here. Then I'm going to multiply our score by 100. And if you don't want a decimal portion, because we'll display a percentage, we can cast this as an int. Okay, that all looks good. And we'll print the final score. Print your score is plus, we need to cast our score to a string because we're using string concatenation, plus I'll add a percent sign. All right, let's try it. I'm intentionally going to get the last question wrong. So we should have a 75% if we have four questions. So that would be A, B, C. Is the earth round? What's earth? I'm gonna guess D. Answers A, B, C, A. Your guess is A, B, C, D. Your score is 75%. Okay, let's test it by getting all wrong answers. D, 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 D. Your score is 0%. Congratulations. And we'll test it one more time, but get all the right answers. We just want to be sure that we have 100%. That's A, B, C, A. Your score is 100%. Now, the last thing that you can add 
is that we can play again if we want, and I have a separate function for that. If you would like to add this option, here's how to do so. Let's remove that pass. Let's set a variable named response equal to some input. Do you want to play again? Let's ask for yes or no. Actually, let me remove that. Okay. And depending on the user's response, it might be a lowercase. So let's make it uppercase. Response equals response and use the upper method. If response is equal to yes, all caps. If response is equal to yes, then return true. Else we will return false. And that is it for this function. The last thing we need to do is to create a while loop that will continue to ask the player if they want to play again. This will be after we call the new game function while play again. And remember, this will return either true or false, depending on the user's response. While play again, new game and call the new game function to create a new game for us. If we escape the while loop, that means the user doesn't want to play again. So let's print a message such as bye. All right, let's test it. I'm going to get all of the correct answers this time. A, B, C, A. All right, your score is 100%. Do you want to play again? I'm going to type Yes. All right, then we can play again. D, 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 D. Your score is 0%. Do you want to play again? No, I think I mastered this game. Bye. All right, everybody. So that's how you can use Python to create a simple quiz game. I will post all of this code to the comment section down below. But, well, yeah, that's a basic quiz game in Python for you all. Hey you, yeah I'm talking to you. If you learned something new, then help me help you in three easy steps by smashing that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.